What is up, world? We are grinding in Greenpoint, banging in Brooklyn, doing work in Williamsburg, and occasionally making moves in Manhattan. This is Fight Fuel MMA. I'm Dave Clifford, a.k.a. Fishy Fridge on Twitter. And I am Joy, at JoyGNY on Twitter. Got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Um, big news in the MMA world. Lots of big news. Uh, we're going to get to that, but first we need to shout out... Our buddies on Twitter, Razor Cabron and Mill Hustles, they have a podcast on, uh, they talk about wrestling, among many other things, and they are way too real. You can find them on YouTube, you can download them on iTunes, and you can check them out on TuneIn Radio. So give them a listen, give them a follow, give them a like, give them a subscribe, all that good shit, because they are awesome. Extremely entertaining. Yeah, really good listening. <laughs> yeah. And tying in to pro wrestling... Oh, I guess yeah. the first thing we could talk about are the theatrics of one Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. That's been going on for a couple days now. Uh, he retired. But then he didn't retire. Yeah. I and, mean, uh, yeah. that tweet, he tweeted, uh, I don't remember the exact words, but uh, something along the lines of, thanks for the cheese, you know, I'm going to retire young. And it was such a trolly, like, trolling move. That we were all just like, meh. I mean, at first I thought maybe he'd gotten hacked, and then I figured it was contract negotiations, which basically is what it is. Uh, he has since clarified he is not retired. Um, he wants co-promotion. I think he wants co-promotion with the UFC, uh, and they're never going to do that. Yeah, well, what I get from it is, I mean, it's a small step in that direction, but um, he like ba what he was saying is like he really wants to just focus on his fight because this is a very challenging fight for him against Diaz at UFC 200. If I were him, or I'd want to focus on my fight too. I mean, Nate yeah. Diaz marked him the first time. Around. Like those Saturday morning kids jujitsu classes. Like he needs to start going to those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, he's in Iceland right now training. Uh, he didn't want to disrupt his training schedule to go do these media obligations. And you know what? I understand where he's coming from. He's a fighter. He should get paid to fight. But based on where he came from and his rise to fame was because of his mouth. Yeah. And, he, you know, he did some impressive stuff in the ring. backed it up in the cage. In the cage. I don't know why I just said ring. It's, uh, oh, because he's, like, he's acting like a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's a double-edged sword. His rise to fame was spurred... I'd say in equal parts with his fighting skill and his promotional skill. Now he loses, doesn't want to disrupt his training, doesn't want to fly to, I think, Vegas to do the UFC promos they were cutting. Yeah. Uh, and Dana White basically said, you're not doing it, you are off the card. Now this is the official line. It's very doubtful that it's this simple, that he doesn't want to do promos so he's off the card. Yeah. I mean, they could fly a camera out to Iceland. He's yeah. done a lot of promos for him. There's definitely more to it than that. Yeah. And and although I don't agree with him being like, "Oh, I'm not I need to train for my fight." Like that doesn't make you special. Like everyone else in the card and Dana White made a good point in saying everyone else in the card has media obligations. They all have to fulfill the media obligations and if you don't want to, you're off the card. I I I get where he's coming from, but I also respect that McGregor is making moves in the right direction to protect the fighters. The way I look at it, and personally so, I'm not a yeah. big fan of McGregor, Yeah. every time he rings a concession from the UFC, it sets a precedent for other fighters to post off of in the future, and it will help fighters get paid better. It will help them get taken care of more. Do I like that he's the guy spearheading this charge? Not really, no. <laughs> and I don't think he's doing it out of any sense of <clears throat> civic duty here, yeah. but <clears throat> when he wins, other fighters win. Yeah, and I don't even know if he's like really doing it to spearhead a sort of movement. I think he's just looking to get paid. Yeah, I don't think he's looking out for anybody else, but he doesn't have to be. The effect is going to be the same. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see what happens in, in the coming Hopefully time dates. I mean, leading up to the card, but um, for now, we're going to just move on because we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, what are we talking about? Well, right we're talking now? about 
the fight that was added on the UFC 200 card. So the McGregor Diaz is pulled for right now. Uh, if you go on the UFC's website, it's the main event is to be announced to de- versus to be determined. So mm. there's that. But I want to talk about a fight that was added on the card of, like I'd say a week or two ago. Kat Singano versus Juliana Pena. Juliana Pena. What do you think about that? Um, I think Singano's a tough woman, and Pina was coming in with a ton of hype. I believe she was injured, had to sit out a while, but... They were both injured. Yeah, this is basically... The way I'm looking at it, this is... The winner of this fight is one to two fights from the title. Possibly one fight. Here's here's my beef. I got a little beef. Kat Singano is an amazing fighter. Kat Singano debuted UFC versus Misha Tate a couple years ago and beat Misha Tate. Yeah, uh, Tate disputed the stoppage. She said it was stopped early, but... I I mean, you could say that, but I'm, she was getting her bell rung and she would have lost the fight. Need, well, she might have won the fight. She was up two rounds, right? No, she wasn't. No? Mm. Not in my opinion. Okay. But anyway, so she definitely took it to the current champion and, and beat her... In the books. Okay. okay. So then uh, she had to, had a long layoff, and she was injured, had a long layoff, and she comes back and fights Amanda Nunes, who's fighting for the title right now at the same card. Mm. She totally outclassed and beat Amanda Nunes. Second and third round. The first round was all Nunes, I thought. Yeah, but that's, that's her bread and butter. Amanda Nunes is a very extremely powerful, powerful fighter. Who guesses very early? So. Apparently, at the beginning of the second round. Yeah. So, um, our predictions for the Tate Nunez uh, title fight is I'm pretty sure Tate's going to win that. Unless yeah, I think Nunez Tate's gonna... catches her real early and, like, knocks her out. No, I think Tate's going to which... take it into the third, fourth, fifth rounds, and I think she'll yeah. finish in one of those rounds, actually. Yeah. So, now I have, I think that um, Zingano Pena, I think Zingano's going to win. And then it's going to be Zingano Tate. Yeah, and so. then when Rana comes back, she gets a crack at whoever holds the title. Yeah. Immediate so. rematch. Probably a clause in her contract, so. All right, so that's just something to um, be on the lookout for the UFC 200 card. It's going to be very exciting uh, bantamweight women's fights. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's that. Now, I, I want to say this to-be-announced versus to-be-announced thing. <laughs> Going back to the headliner. I don't know what could happen. White, it looks like right now McGregor is officially off the card. He did state that he's not retired. He has to do that because if he officially retires, he's got to wait four months to come back in action as per the USADA because of their, you know, enhanced drug testing now. They don't want you to retire. Juice up and come back ready to go a month later. Oh, Under- I didn't know that. Yeah, understandable. But White has said openly that there is no damage to the relationship between him and Conor McGregor, or the UFC and Conor it's McGregor. That is fucking crazy. Can you imagine another fighter pulling this shit and then Dana Dana fucking White going out and saying, no, we're good. We're, we're all good. I got no problems with this guy. It shows you either how much White likes him or how much the UFC values McGregor as an asset to the company is yeah. what it shows you. It's pretty insane. Yeah. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, they could all just be talking shit right now. It could all just be facade. We could get and- GSP versus Lawler. Yeah. Uh, Hey, I'd much rather see that. I mean, if you listen to our podcast talking about the UFC 200 card a couple weeks ago, about how perplexed we were about Diaz McGregor being the main event for that card, uh, we're very happy that this fight's pulled. I I think we're two of the few people who really didn't want to see that rematch, to be honest. Yeah. no, At least not at 170. Yeah. I think a couple people didn't want to see it that soon and headlining their biggest card, Hmm. you know. uh, Let's see some title fights. You know, people are now saying, let's get Nate Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. Um, Listen, I really like Diaz. Excellent fighter. Mm -hmm. I... I don't know why you give Nate Diaz to Robbie Lawler. One seventy is no one seventy is too big for Diaz. Yeah. He's fought there, but it's too big for him. Yeah, and Lawler blasts people's heads off. I mean, Diaz is a valuable asset to the company. Don't do that to him. Yeah, give him no, a that's fight. A good at, idea. 
If you're going to give him a fight at 170, pick it carefully. If you're going to give him any fight he wants, give him someone at 55, yeah. I think. And it's plenty of time. Like, this isn't happening until July 9th. Yeah. This is a couple months out. It's not like, oh, it's getting close to the wire. And no, cut, you could you cut know, weight, weight cuts and you training camps. You could cut camps the weight and, right now. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. We'll keep you updated. And uh, moving on, we're going to talk about... You want to talk about him or you want to talk I about I was that? just thinking of a fighter who was an underappreciated asset to the company... Benson Henderson's fighting tonight. Yes. In Bellator, uh, for the hundred seventy pound strap over there. Oh, and he stayed at one seventy. Yeah, he's immediate title fight at one seventy. Okay. And you know this is a guy who could now be a champion in three organizations: in the WEC, in the UFC, and now in Bellator. He'll be the first man to do that if he wins if he the can title pull it off. tonight. Yes. Um, so tune into that if you got the time and. Uh, inclination because that should be a sick fight yeah and upon uh henderson's uh leave from ufc his departure he was top 15 in two-way classes yeah he's uh he's up so there. i mean he's a he's a really good fighter he's extremely talented um he's got great hair <laughs> <laughs> and, and i like that he's willing to move between the two classes he, yeah. he can fight he's 170 tough. he showed us that when he beat brandon thatch with yeah. that RNC, that was insane. Yeah, was... so um, if you're able to watch the fight tonight, definitely watch it because he'll be making history tonight if he wins that belt. Uh, history tonight, John Jones returns at UFC 197. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow so, night. Yeah. The weigh-ins tonight. We'll get to see him weigh in tonight. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about UFC 197 next. That goes on tomorrow. Um, there was a lot of uh, problems with the card because it was supposed to be the epic rematch between champion Daniel Cormier and John Jones. Former Co champion. Former champion John Jones, who never lost his title to any other person but himself. Yeah, good way to put it. Yeah. And now we get John Jones versus Ovin St. Preux for an interim title due to a Daniel Cormier lower leg injury. Uh, real quick, Joy's article on interim titles is going to be up on our website tonight or tomorrow morning. Should be uh, tonight. It should be tonight. It's a really good read. Check it out. Uh, details. You. Some of the you are welcome. Some of the the ways the UFC is using their interim titles. So yeah. get on our website, fightfuelmma.com. Check out that article. Yeah, and I go into de I go into more detail about you know what they're doing with the interim titles and how they're just throwing them around lately. Um, this is a perfect example: John Jones versus OSP. For an interim light heavyweight title, Daniel Cormier has an injured lower leg. He's only going to be out of action briefly. Two months. Two, three, Two, months, three months. He'll be... Maybe. So this interim title will only be in place for this one fight because it's the very next time... It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's a number one contender's fight, basically. Yeah, which... The, and then here's another thing. OSP was a late minute replacement. Yeah. But they had two top contenders fight... A week ago, against each About other, Teixeira ago. and Evans. and um, yeah, Rashad Evans, and they could have just pulled someone from a from that fight, preferably Teixeira. They should have pulled. <laughs> Based on the result, yeah, they could have could have um, built a rematch and had him go against Jones for an interim title. I mean, or don't make the interim title. They kept talking about pulling yeah. people. People wanted Johnson in there. If you're going to give Johnson a shot at any kind of give belt... Give him a full camp. Even if it's a bullshit belt, give him a full camp. Yeah. Just make this fight. Make this... Give it Jones and OSP. You Don't, can't make it the headliner yeah. then, though. Because you got DJ versus Henry Cejudo as the co-main, and that, that'd that be screwed up. Yeah, so basically, um, I feel like they put the interim title up for grabs because this is the headliner... Um, it's bullshit that OSP isn't getting a proper training camp to fight for a title, um, but, which is why I think they should have pulled Teixeira and got a late minute replacement for um, to face Evans, Evans yeah, you could have last that. week. That would have been a that little bit right. more appropriate, but um, at least OSP's getting a shot. Yeah, Good the, for him. The, he the, gets to headline a pay-per-view. Yeah. He gets to... Um, Go against John Jones. He's returned. It's this big exposure big for OSP. Yes. But the thing is, to keep this the main event, they put the belt on the line. Partially, I think, because DJ is not going to pull numbers as a main. Yeah. Unfortunately, even Versa Hudo has got a lot of steam coming in. 
the lighter weight men's divisions just they don't pull as much. So yeah, but you, um, you got a bullshit belt up for grabs now. Bullshit I, belt up for grabs to make it the main event and then keep you know DJ happy because there at least there's a belt at the main event. And he's co-main and his belt's up for grabs against a very, very worthy challenger in Cejudo. Yeah, I I think this is going to be Johnson. Benavidez was probably Johnson's toughest test, but... Uh, Not Dodson? This, nah, Benavidez. Oh, Dodson's amazing. He is, but <laughs> Another, Cejudo's a sick fighter. I think he's big for the weight class. Olympic gold medalist in yeah. wrestling. Yeah, Cejudo is uh, yeah Olympic gold medalist... In wrestling, he speaks very well on the mic. He is um, a pleasure to watch. I I enjoy watching. Yeah, anyway. and DJ Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson has been the flyweight champ since the weight class was. Yeah, since his advent, he's the first yeah. and only flyweight champ. So he is a very dominant champion in that weight class. He's a very well-rounded fighter. He's a very exciting fighter, in my opinion. People probably wouldn't agree with me. Some people, I just some. Think, I mean, some people do. Some people think he's maybe kind of boring or or safe in his fighting strategy. I think he's a uh, uh, tactical, tactical, and it's amazing. It's it's amazing to watch DJ fight, in my opinion. So I'm really anytime he's on a card, I'm very excited to see him fight. I like watching him fight just because I think uh, he's very similar to GSP in my eyes. He comes mm-hmm. in exceptionally well conditioned. He's got a very good game plan. He executes. Um, he he listens to his corner well. You He doesn't do anything wrong. No. If you fight Demetrius Johnson and you think you're going to capitalize on a mistake, you need to switch that game plan up because he does not do anything wrong. Yeah. The the handicap he has is that the smaller guys, the, sometimes even the knockouts, it just doesn't translate as excitingly because of their size. If you're if you're a hardcore fan, you don't care, but yeah. you know it just doesn't draw as much. Yeah, I mean, and that's if you think about, and we'll we'll get to this later. Um, if you think about like just in wrestling in in WWE, it's always like the bigger guys that get over, and it's always the bigger guys that they want to promote. It's just because they're it, big. It, yeah, as much charisma and as much as I love like the smaller guys and the high flyers. They never want to promote them. <laughs> yeah. So, and I guess that's the same in the UFC. Um, what else yeah, do we so have there's on this that. Card, yeah. uh, we just want to briefly go over the card because this is going to be a really good card tomorrow. Uh, Anthony Pettis. Versus Edson Barbosa. I'm very excited for this fight. I uh, love watching Anthony Pettis fight. He is like a highlight reel. He does really cool stuff in there and he's very exciting to watch. Yeah, and I think he's going to get beat by Edson Barbosa tomorrow night. I mm. think Barbosa's has not slicker striking, but more powerful striking. His switch kick is so fucking fast. Yeah. And I think he's the physically stronger of these two. I I think, based on how Pettis has looked lately, I think Barbosa could capitalize and score a big victory, take down a big name in Pettis. Yeah, that would be a very big Big victory for Barboza. Uh, Pettis just held the title not too long ago. He got beat by RDA, who's in the best shape of his life and the best yeah. RDA we've ever seen. So, I mean, that doesn't put any sort of knock on Pettis right now. Um, but hopefully, in for Pettis, he wins this fight because he needs this. Yeah, and he gets back up. I mean, Barboza needs it Barbosa. too, obviously. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, All right, Whitaker versus Natal. I'm excited for this fight, too. I'm picking Forrest Whitaker on this one, yo. <laughs> Forrest? Uh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> no, uh, Robert, Robert Whitaker, Whitaker is a really exciting fighter. Yes. I like the fact that he decided to move up from 170 to 185, and he's looked amazing since I, since he did. Yeah. His strength, he looks stronger at 185. Mm-hmm. Um, still has that KO power. Yeah. He's not drained from the cut. And I like to watch him fight. Yeah, he is. I think he's someone to watch. I think the next couple yeah. years... He's going to be legit contender status. Yeah. Oh, and a brief uh, side note. This card is taking place in Brazil. Oh, no, it's not. Boa! No, it's not. I'm lying. Boa! It's it doesn't matter. I get, Vegas, to, I get to go, Boa! <laughs> I'm still going to do that the whole time. That's the other card. That's I'm happens. still going to go, Boa! Every time. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, where were we? So, Rafael Natal is his opponent. Uh, I say Whitaker wins this fight. Yeah. 
I don't, right. I don't really know too much about Natal. So. Rodriguez versus Feely. Uh, Feely coming in from the fragmenting team Alpha Male. Uh, twice the experience of his opponent. Mm. Feely's a good fighter. I think the first yeah. fight we saw him in the UFC, I believe, I don't remember his opponent, but he came in at 145. He had been training to take a fight at 170 or something like wow. that. Big difference. And <laughs> he won uh, emphatically. Mm -hmm. uh, exciting fighter. Yeah, let's see what happens. I'm surprised he's not ranked. Well, see if you get ranked. Yeah. Um, and then we're just going to briefly go over the prelims because there are two fights in particular that we want to talk about. Um, well, Sergio Pettit is Sergio fighting. Sergio Pettit. I'm so excited. Um, I love that the Pettis brothers are on cards together. Ant uh, Anthony does not like it. Oh, really? He said in the past, uh, uh, I believe he said watching his brother lose yeah. messed him up going into his fight. Yeah, uh, that's he, true. he did not want to, but I guess from a bookings perspective, it's a slam dunk, so they're going to keep doing it no yeah. matter what the Pettis brothers want. And I wish nothing but wins for Sergio Pettis. Yeah, he's fighting Chris Gladys, the Greek assassin. Yeah, don't uh, know too much about him. He's 9 and 2, it says. Um, I don't know how many fights he's had in the USC, but. That should be a good. We'll fight. see what happens. Uh, that's a flyweight bout, and then um, the other one that I want to talk about in the prelims. In the prelims, is former champion in the strawweight women's division, Carla Esparza, the Cookie Monster, currently ranked number two in the strawweight division, yeah. is going against a number fourteen ranked Ju Juliana Lima. I think Esparza's ready to get beat. Um, I I could be entirely wrong about this. Yeah. But I don't think she wants it anymore. Uh, I think... Maybe I the think time gonna off win. gave her, you know, a newfound, you know, sense in mm. what... It could have renewed her, her love of competition, her will to fight, but I don't think so. I think she's going to get beat. Yeah, so Carla Esparza dominated uh, the tough season, the women's strawweight season of... Uh, okay. Uh, Carla, sorry about that. Carla Esparza dominated the strawweight women's um, tough house. Yeah. She was ranked number one. She was the Invicta uh, strawweight champion, mm -hmm. which is uh, their feeder league now at this point yeah, for the UFC. Um, she dominated everybody. In uh, yeah, it was in the house? Yeah. In the house. No and one then, could do anything against yeah. her. Yeah. And then she basically mentally beat the crap out of Rose Namajunas um, and won the title. And and I thought to myself, I totally b bought the hype of that house and how they filmed it and everything, that she, no one was going to take that title away from her because of how amazing she was ah, on the show. But now that you said that, who's champ now? Yeah. Joanna Injekcik, and nobody's going to take this belt from her. Yeah. That was kind of a GSP <laughs> accent, but you know what That's I'm talking okay. about. You tried. Yeah. Um, so her very first title defense, uh, Johanna Janjecek, and Jan Jacek beat the crap out of her. He's marked her. And, and, and it looked as though, like, she, Esparza, like, gave up. I, because honestly... Because she was probably very frustrated that her... Her, her work, takedowns were just getting stuffed, stuffed and she couldn't do anything. Yeah. I think she... She looked like she was having a freaking panic attack when she walked into the cage. Like, she looked vacant, terrified, and confused. Yeah. She did not look like a fighter ready to go out there and defend her title. Yeah, so hopefully she comes back stronger than ever I because don't care. she yeah. I don't, I don't care. know. <laughs> um I'm she's be, she's got a wow us at this point. She's fighting a number 14 ranked contender, so if she doesn't murk this uh this opponent Lady. then <laughs> I think that's it for her. I think so too. Um all right, so moving on. That's the card tomorrow. Definitely check it out if you can. We're working, unfortunately. Womp womp, so we're going to have to watch it. At like four in the morning when we get out. Yeah. Uh, next, we want to move on to as New Yorkers. Proud New Yorkers. Proud New Yorkers. Uh, MMA has been legalized in New York after fifteen years. After fifteen years, this is a big deal. This is a huge deal, especially for people like us. Yeah. Uh, huge fight fans. I want to watch York. fights at the Garden. <laughs> yeah. Or the Park Place. Yeah. Or a parking lot, if they would. I don't right? care. I just want to watch yeah. fights in New York. Now we can. Yeah. So it's sanctioned. We're extremely excited. So they already, like, decided that UFC 205 was going to be on November 12th at Madison Square Garden for the inaugural Greatest MMA fight at the Garden. Time. Yeah. So um, now 
that's a long way away. That's in November. That's at the end of the year. But this is going to be an extremely, or this needs to be an extremely carefully planned out um, event. Yeah. Well, where booking is going to happen pretty early, just like they were doing for UFC 200. So already you hear rumors swirling around the interwebs. Ronda Rousey's going to headline the card. How yeah, do you no, feel about that? I don't care if she does. I say if you could book Chris Weidman, if you could book John Jones, if you could book Algernon Sterling, Ally Quinta, you just book yeah. all, the, all New the New York New fighters. Yorkers. I don't care where they are in the rank. I don't care. Put them on the card. They won't care where they are on the card yeah. either. Yeah. They Every just want fighter out of New York is going to want on this card. Yes. And although Frankie Edgar is a Jersey boy. We'll take him. New York has officially adopted him. Yes. As our own. So, fuck Frank, you, Jersey. Get on no, this I'm just card. kidding. Fry <laughs> State area. Um, yeah, so I would love to see Frankie Edgar on the card. I'd love to see Chris Weidman on the card, like you were yeah. saying. Yeah. John Jones, of course. Like, they need to really focus on that. And if they do that, I will be so happy. And I think all the other New Yorkers, huge fight fans, will be happy as well. Ally so. Quinta, you want to talk a Long Island boy right there. Yeah. I was talking Let's to Ally Quinta <laughs> on Twitter one time, and he was talking about his his replacement uh he was a late replacement he was talking about look it's not like i'm outside of mulcahy he's at four in the morning that guy is <laughs> long island as it yeah. gets and then any uh long island person would know mulcahy's back to the pub 4 a.m late minute yeah you know what's up with that <laughs> um yeah so, so tell us who you think should be on the card yeah what do you guys think uh anybody from new york that listens to us or four fans yeah Get on. Including our cat. <laughs> well, he counts as like two. Get on the website, <laughs> respond, shoot, whatever. Yeah, Get in yeah. touch with us on um, Twitter. Yeah. What yeah, else Yeah, hit have? us up on Twitter. If you happen to come across our podcast yeah, I'm on it in some odd so. fashion where you don't know us from Twitter, like, hit us up on Twitter. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's get the discussion rolling. <laughs> All, right, All right, so moving on, um, really quick, just want to say uh, Eddie Bravo Invitational is coming up this Sunday, uh, part six. Watch that shit. Definitely watch it. Uh, if you have Fight Pass, if you have UFC Fight Pass, it's free to watch. Uh, EBI is uh, the Eddie Bravo Invitational. Eddie Bravo is a world-famous Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. Belt instructor. Yeah. Submission-only grappling. No gi. Yeah. If you think grappling is boring, watch this because watch there's this. no just, points. Yeah. You have to finish your opponent. And these guys, I think I was like, I don't think they get paid if they don't finish. Yeah. You watch this. If you want to see it's high amazing. level grappling and fighters going for the finish, watch this shit. Yeah. So we just wanted to say watch that. Uh, we're going to watch it this Sunday. We're very excited. Um, so there's that. The last thing we want to talk to talk to you guys about um, something that happened yesterday. And I hate ending things on a sad note, but China, the wrestler, the 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 famous women's wrestler, passed away yesterday, and uh, we just wanted to just talk about it briefly. She was one of my idols growing up because of how amazing strong and imposing she was. Yeah, she was. I mean, I watched some wrestling back in the day and you could not help but be impressed when you saw her. Uh, She had a presence to her, charisma, and like a lot of wrestlers, um, she died young. We don't know the circumstances of her death yet, but it's a rough industry. It's, It's really sad when someone who was, she was so popular, put aside labels of gender and just talk about famous wrestlers, China is always on the list. She is one of the most wildly popular wrestlers to come out of the Attitude Era. She wrestled guys. She beat guys. She got the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. And she was in the Royal Rumble. Um she, she was some amazing. Wrestling, yeah, so. and all while, all the while, she was doing all this groundbreaking stuff for women, or just in wrestling in general. There was, you know, the other chicks in wrestling taking their tops off and talking about puppies and all this stuff. So it was very, very, very refreshing to see her in the ring and see her work in the ring and beat up guys because. As a, 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 a girl watching wrestling when you're young, 
you needed someone like that. So I just wanted to mention that we're both very sad about her passing and we hope that they decide finally to put her in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, in the WWE Hall of Fame. That's something that my sister's very passionate about. I am very passionate about. If they don't decide to do that, I'm going to believe we should cancel our WWE Network yeah, subscription. Okay. And I hope everyone else does that too, because it's a big deal. So I just wanted to mention that. And um, I think we covered everything. I think we got it. We are about to head to work. So watch Bellator tonight. See if Ben Henderson yeah. can be a three legitimate organization champion. Uh, watch UFC 197 tomorrow. tomorrow. My pick uh, is Barbosa over Pettis. I'm only going to make one pick. Well, Jones. Uh, Jones, Jones, Johnson, and I think Pettis is going to win. I hope Pettis wins. <laughs> All right. And then Sunday, EBI. EBI 6, uh, absolute weight division, all weights. Cool. Um, big weekend of fights. Signing That's off it. from Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Yeah. We will catch you next time, guys. All right.